Hey everybody, it's Joe Trippy, and welcome back to That Trippy Show. This week, more fallout from convicted felon Donald Trump's 34 felony convictions. 34! And now Steve Bannon, he can't be that happy uh, looking at jail time. And I try to call out the insane both sides that the media is doing. We take a look at why I'm still optimistic about the Senate. And before we get into it today... Everyone should check out Joe Biden's D-Day speech in Normandy. It's powerful, and it's a reminder of what he has done and will continue to do for democracy around the globe. Look at the contrast from Biden's speech. Quote, what the Allies did here 80 years ago far surpasses anything we could have done on our own. Together, we won the war. The men who fought here became heroes. Given an audacious mission, knowing the probability of dying was real, he said, but they did it anyway, knowing without a doubt there are things worth fighting and dying for. Freedom, worth it. Democracy, worth it. America, worth it. Then, now, and always. Versus Trump. I like the ones who aren't captured, calling POWs losers. You know, I tweeted this this morning, 80 years ago today, Americans sacrificed not to conquer and acquire territory, but for an idea, to stand for the cause of freedom against Hitler and the Nazis. What was in it for them? Our future. Heroes all will honor their sacrifice, not only today, but this November. We share the speech on our show notes. And Alex, where do you want to get started? Before we go anywhere else, the Biden speech, I mean, it was just so clear. He's over there with our allies, standing firm for democracy. On the other hand, you have Trump and, by the way, now a bunch of Republicans in Congress voting openly for Putin. Like it's, It, it really is a striking contrast just on the democracy. For, I realize there's a bunch of other issues we're going to talk about. The voters and, and the media are all spun up on, but it is just wild how different it is. Yeah. And the just the video, I mean, the, the, the I don't know if people saw it, but there was a great video of a 101-year-old vet, uh, you know, D-Day vet greeting Zelensky, president of Ukraine. And they... No, you're my hero. No, you're my hero. Um, you, you know, you save democracy. No, you're saving democracy. It was, uh, it really, you know, it, 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 if you haven't seen it, look for it because it'll bring a tear to your eye. I mean, it just shows what this is really all about. It, it, it takes what's going on in Ukraine. I mean, I think today that connection is becoming, you know, clear, and hopefully, uh, people will start to get what what exactly you know, Trump and the Republican embrace of Putin is, you know, it it just makes that contrast clear. You know, I seem to recall, and I can't remember where I saw this, but but Biden recently was on the record saying something along the lines of, and it was mostly having to do with holding Europe together, defending Ukraine. Like he kept saying, I did it. It was me. And it was a really good point because I think what gets lost in a lot of the commentary on how Joe Biden has done as president so far, which I know we not not with us. We he's done a pretty damn good job, and we make a point of calling it out. But his continued ability in foreign policy, especially with with the threat of Putin and Russia, like he, I think he should be taking more credit. Oh yeah, no, look, I mean the coalition it was held together by Biden in, in the face, by the way, of Republicans dragging their feet. Not you know, basically Ukraine would be in much better shape. If you didn't have the literally, you know, red alert, guess whose side the Republican MAGA crowd is on? And in the face face of all that, Biden was able to keep the coalition together, the alliance together, get other members of the alliance to fill in where they could while we were absent because you couldn't get, you know, you couldn't get funding out out, out of Congress and then got it, you know, finally got Congress to act and pass that budget. Uh, you know the, the the outlay, and yeah, now now equipment is showing up, hopefully in time. But again, they're like you know, D Day, um, those people. I mean, they, they were fighting for the same thing that Ukraine's fighting for now. Unlike D Day, and unlike coming to the aid of Europe, we're not on the ground in Ukraine. We're not uh, expending American lives. The people who are doing that are the Ukrainians themselves. We're we're just an ally who's helping 
stop the same kind of horror that now Putin is enacting on the people of Ukraine. And by the way, will continue to do if he takes Ukraine. There's no doubt his intent is to not stop there. And this is a mistake that was made in the early days of, of the Nazi thrust into Europe. Too many thought, oh, can't, it, this isn't really happening. Well, it, what's happening in Ukraine and what we're doing, and, and I, I do still think that, I hope we can find a link to that because we should put it in our show notes of that, of that uh, veteran and Zelensky. I think it, it really glued that what this is all about together in a way that speeches cannot. So I almost hate having to go here again. I know we, we did a, a brief segment last week on, on the trial. No, no, no. I like this. We can go there. Obviously. I don't want to see it. Yeah. Come on. I mean, I think it's, again, the contrast. It's the contrast. Here you have Biden over there. Here's a moment in American history where we came, where those men fought. And I mean, they lied. A lot of them lied. I mean, we talk about Trump lying all the time. You no, know, some of these guys lied, say they were 16 year olds who lied so that they could go over there and fight for for a place they'd never been to, didn't know the people, but it was for the idea of freedom, democracy, and stopping an autocrat on the on the march, you know, who is just murdering and destroying people the way Putin is doing now in Ukraine. So you have that contrast. And then you have the draft dodger sitting in a courtroom now convicted of 34 counts. Uh, this is actually the contrast that I think, you know, we've talked about this post the 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 trial. I, this is the contrast that's got to be front and center for the American people. You're right about the contrast. And let me put it this way about why it's just been, it's been kind of like, I think we talked about this last week. It was a really good day to be on Twitter on Thursday night, but it's been kind of exhausting since there's this like, and it's not just the crazies saying it. How did we go from, okay, there is a world in which many people in the mainstream media are saying that being convicted of 34 felonies can actually help Trump. Like what that, there is no way in any world that that is actually helpful in any like real sense of the yeah, word, no right? Way. Absolutely like, what the hell? no way. Absolutely no way. As you put it, how could this actually help Trump? Well, look, the fact is it further pushes away those Haley supporters. I mean, some of them are, you know, Republican, MAGA, they'll move back. But the, the people that, uh, you know, a large group of those Republicans that we've seen, the 31% that said they wouldn't vote for him if he was convicted of a crime, some of them are, uh, he lost some of them, okay? He lost, uh, uh, you know, some of the people that have drifted away from Joe Biden, whether they're, you know, you, you know, young people, blacks, Latinos. I mean, all the things that the press was saying, oh, this is a big problem for Biden. He's losing support. Some of that support's coming back. Why? Because, well, one guy's old and decent. And the other guy's- 34, the other guy's, right, 34 you know, felonies. Old and convicted of 34 felonies and is, uh, you, you know, and is a sick, dangerous guy. You know, the, the, that's a pretty much, you know, you know uh, uh, that's going to lose you some support. So I, I just think that that's all crap and that the, you know, the press just keeps buying into this stuff. It's like, you know, the number of people that are on these networks now who just go in on the, you know, as sort of the Republican on the, on set, who just blindly repeat the talking points, you know, that, that this is somehow going to help energize, you know, Trump's base. They, he, they, no, we've all known for quite a while, they're, the MAGA base is energized. They'll go through walls for them. I don't think that being convicted is going to make you, you, it's not going to, you, you can't vote twice. Well, th they'll want to try. It's not going to add a vote to him. It's going to take votes from him. Right. And that's that's the point. It's not No, additive, not at all. It's, right. it's a traction. Okay. I, could, I would concede it's another data point energizing what he already has. But to your point, they were already well, there. Also, this is not taking him. It's not raising yeah, his ceiling at all. Yeah, 7% of MAGA supporters said they wouldn't vote for him if he's convicted. I'm not, again, I'm, I'm not saying it'll be seven points, but if it's one point of MAGA supporters, he's got problems, right? So uh, I just think that this is... Uh, you know, again, uh, I don't under, I don't get it. It's like the the press wants to 
uh, in the pundits want the dead heat race. You know, they want, you know, to keep everybody, you know, glued uh, and, and clicking. And, and it just it 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 just ignores reality. What's totally exhausting about it. And, and again, you and I have been on a lot of the same calls this week, but you know, talking to some pretty seasoned political people who are knowledgeable that this is not their first rodeo and hearing it get to them, some of them say, well, you know, it could help him. Yeah. It's like, there is no world in which it is a good thing for him. I, I just like having to even have that discussion no. back to why I was kind of like, I don't want to talk about the verdict anymore. It's because it's just well, exhausting to have to look, beat that the back. The fact is this again is another step towards shattering his, you know, his invincibility. I think Greg Sargent made that point. You know, he was invincible. Nothing could stop him. I think most people thought it would at least be a hung jury. I, I think a lot of his supporters thought he'd be acquitted or if it wasn't a hung jury, obviously they'll. A lot of his MAGA folks will think, you know, oh, it, it, the system w- was rigged to get him. Th- th- that's true, right? Well, and I think I think Stewart Stewart said something like, "Okay, here's a really simple way to know whether this helps him or hurt him. Does getting acquitted or a hung jury help yes. him? Yes. Those didn't right. happen. No, and that's my point because so it hurts him because <laughs> the sledgehammer that this guy keeps banging and pushing people away from him." The fifty-three percent of independents who said, or excuse me, of undecideds in the battleground states that said they wouldn't vote for him if he's convicted, I don't know if it'll be fifty-three percent of them that'll follow through with that. But if it's half of that, he's in trouble, right? I mean, so, and, and so it's not. And then you have on top of this, you, you know, people want to talk about whether you know will the judge sentence him to jail or what's going to happen here. You know, I don't know, but what we do know is two Trump White House senior staff now. Our one is already in jail, Peter Navarro, and the other, Steve Bannon, uh, just, just broke right before we came on the podcast. Steve Bannon uh, has to report to jail by July 1st. Um, and by the way, again, think about it. So what's in the news right now? Hey, the guy's been uh, you, you know indicted, uh, excuse me, convicted of 34 felony counts. And then within days of that, you find out Steve Bannon, another, you know, you know, White House, you know, somebody who was in the uh, the Trump White House, the second one now behind Peter Navarro, is going to end up in, in, in jail, too. So, you, you know, the, the, just hearing that Steve Bannon is going to jail is going, I think, again, to move some of those under, you know, this really is a weird illegal mob kind of thing is what I'm talking Go starts to rattle around that, you know, may, it, it's something I said earlier about, you know, could it be, yes, that our elections and our judicial system are imperfect, but the best in the world? And that the truth is that Donald Trump, Steve Bannon, these guys are liars, felons, and the worst president in the worst administration uh, in the history of the United States. Which one of those? And I, I still believe that that is going to be the question that decides if the great American experiment continues or not. And I, you know, uh, I, I'm there with Jill Biden. I think when that is how this comes down, that's what Bannon going, you know, having to uh, report to jail by July 1. That's what the 34 uh, conviction, felony convictions add up. It starts adding up. And the contrast, again, going back to D-Day and a president, Biden, there with other world leaders, holding a coalition together with Zelensky and, and, and that uh, veteran calling each other heroes because of the fight that one made 80 years ago and the fight one is leading today. That that contrast with this with this criminal lying, and by the way, it was a jury of twelve, you know, Americans who found the president of the United States guilty. He can yell at the judge and everybody else he wants to, but they found him guilty. They decide, and there were there were very clearly people who one who only got his information from Truth Social. And the other, you know, another one who got the bulk of their information from Fox News when they were filling out the forms. There were people on that jury that it must have been tough, 
But in the end, they looked at the evidence and did the right thing. And Donald Trump's never going to accept that. And that's probably one of the reasons I think the judge has a problem on his hands, because, you know, normally you have a somebody who's convicted on 34 felony counts. They come in, they um, ask for, you know, basically have some sense of conscience and uh, and remorse. And that's what kind of gets you to, OK, you've got a suspend, suspended sentence. Uh, this is. Uh, you, you know, I, I think the judge has a, a it's going to be fascinating because I think, you, you know, Trump's almost begging to get thrown in jail. I mean, maybe he wants to be there with Peter Navarro and Steve Bannon. But, uh, you know, I, I don't think the judge will do that. Would he get Secret Service protection in jail? Yeah, of course. Serious question. Yeah, no. Yeah, of course. I wonder how that would work. That's they, No, they uh, look, they can, it, you know, it, whether it's house arrest or whether it's the club fed, you know, some, uh, you know, ankle bracelet, whatever, they'll figure it out if, if that's what happens. I just don't know. And again, the people who say, oh, if you do that, his people will go, you know, it will it will win him the election. It will make his people, you know, I don't know. I, I mean, yes, his people will be energized and out there and, and doing the crazy. But I think, you know, I still believe, it, like I said, Jill Biden, people will choose good over evil. I think they'll pick a president who knows that what we fought for on D-Day versus one who thinks that those people who fought and died on in you know on that beach were losers and losers, suckers yeah. and pick yes an, an old decent guy over an old felon who's guilty on 34 counts i mean that's that, you know if if you want to make it though, that frame it that way i'm for framing it that way Bring it on. Well, so let's let's go there because this was the other discourse thing that has happened since last we talked about this on the pod. Should the Biden campaign be using this more? It, it word out of Biden land was essentially, I think they said something about rule of law and, and and standing up for it, but they're not, you know, jumping all in on this. Is is that a mistake? Yeah, look, David Rothkopf said it. It's a but it's more than just about Joe Biden campaigning on it. It's about everyone on the pro democracy side needs to make this part of their storytelling. This needs to be the contrast. I, I mean, uh, he put it. You know, the fact that Trump Trump is a felon, sexual abuser, fraudster, and a traitor. The fact of all of his ninety one felony indictments, the intersection of his criminal and legal record with his two impeachments, his lifetime of deceit, corruption, and business failure, his role as a coup plotter, as author of The Big Lie, his theft of national secrets, all these oh, things forgot about that one. compose <laughs> the picture of who Trump is that we, that he, you know, that, that, that Rothkopf said, you know, that must be conveyed. It's not merely about presenting the fact that Trump is a convicted felon, which I keep repeating. It's about weaving the fact into the broader narrative of his shameful character and of the threat another four years in office of this reprobate would mean. And if you think about that again and put it in the context of today at D-Day, that's what I'm saying. There's like this rational moment where America did an awesome thing and those men saved the world that day. And one old decent man is there honoring them. And the other one is screaming about his phony indictments and impeachments and, and, uh, and how he's going to go after the people who found him guilty. <laughs> how he's going to, when if he's back in the White House, he's going to arrest Bragg uh, and throw him in jail. That is the mob boss, the convicted felon. You know, the, the reprobate, I mean, just complete picture of who Trump really is and the, th that contrast between. So, you know, look, people have all kinds of problems with Biden. I got that. But it's no longer, hey, the, the, you know, there's, you know, one's just as bad as the other. Oh, there, there's three or four years difference in age. They're, they're both old. No, one's old and decent. The other one is a old felon, sexual abuser, fraudster, traitor, you, you know, 91 indictments, you, the whole thing. It's not even a close freaking call. And I think, again, that, at, look, people, a lot of people, oh, 31% of Republicans said they wouldn't vote for him if he was convicted. 
folks, it's not going to happen in one day. It's not like, okay, he was convicted. Wow, look at all those Republicans taking a walk. Wow, look at all those undecided voters taking an immediate 24 hours, they take, take a walk. Um, no, it's going to be a slow bleed, but it's going to happen. And, and by the way, there's going to also be a slow rise of Biden. And since we're sitting in a dead heat, the slow bleed is going to take Trump down and the slow ride over Biden over the next four months. We'll, we'll, you know, we'll see how high that can go. I, I, I've said many times on the podcast, it'll be Biden over 50 percent. And, you know, yeah, people uh, don't want to hear it. The press, the pundits, they're still going to both sides us to death. But it's like common sense if you actually look at where the polls are today, who's weak where, where that weakness is likely to get short up. And I know, look, you know, I keep saying this. and I knew it used to dra- drive you crazy when I said it, Alex, but Trump is the sledgehammer. He's been banging away and he's leaving crumbs all over the place. And those crumbs are Haley voters. They're, they're some of the uh, um, the people that that have drifted away from Biden. Blacks, Latinos, young people, some women. So then you have to, like I said, I keep saying he's going to keep banging that sledgehammer. The being found guilty on thirty four counts is finally a sledgehammer. The other that that you know bangs the table, that helps move some of those those people our way. But in the end, when you really look at it, those are all groups that on their own, with just Trump's help as being the complete corrupt bastard he is, will create some of those people coming home to Biden. He, as you pointed out when we started at the top of the show, how the hell does being in, found guilty on 34 counts help him? Who does it bring to him? Who? Oh, oh, is there somebody else out there who thinks the guy can go kill somebody on Fifth Avenue and have a good reason? I mean, if you haven't decided that already, that, oh, now you're going to decide, oh, this is the moment. This is what makes me be a, a, a Donald Trump supporter. I don't think so. I mean, there may be a handful of people that, you know, you know but no, it's, it's much, it's, it's going to drive much more and a lot more people the other way. Well, I... I just got an alert on my phone and right before the show, it was the Bannon has to report to jail. I thought it might be someone else going to jail. Uh, Adley just hit a home run. So another one. So that was it. So, so it's more wait, good wait, news, wait, wait, but what's the score? Goes. I think uh, it's now 4-1, but uh, four, O's are coming four, back. Four, okay. so 4-1 J's, but, uh, but O's are coming back. And well, good news. Though. Okay. For anybody who doesn't know, I'm a big O's fan. Okay. Now. <laughs> this is a big O's fan podcast. Yeah. I am too. Um, so... It, Let's. I know we said we talk about the Senate. I think we're going to have to do that on another show. I here's here's your options, Joe. You can pick from either why Trump is toast from a new Navigator poll, which we definitely. I think we probably want to go there. We have a good listener question about the Veep sticks, which we can also talk about on the next show, or we can get into the Senate. Where do you want to go, Joe? I think the Senate's kind of always ever ready. I mean, we can, you know, it's not, nothing's going to change if we have that conversation next or very few things I think will change. Yeah. And we can go into it more. Yeah, and I'd rather more spend more time week. on it than just, Hey, bing, bing, bing. Well, let's, let's go to this. Let's go to the navigator survey. And this is actually what other people were talking about this week. Uh, it, it, we go back to the, the whole, okay, we don't want to hear about the verdict anymore. We don't have to, don't have to jump off a bridge thing about the verdict too much longer. There are still some massive, massive elephants in the room for Trump. And it's, if, if we are not that far, far from when that whole time article came out about what he would actually do in 2025, turns out when voters actually hear about it, they are real, real scared, concerned, probably not going to vote for him. Uh, give you uh, give you a couple numbers. Uh, actually, Joe, what numbers stood out to you? Uh, could it be that sixty eight percent of Americans uh, view this as concerning that Trump would allow states to monitor women's pregnancies in order to prosecute women who violate abortion bans? Saying starts saying states are going to make that decision, um, or could it be fifty nine percent? believe Trump will allow states to monitor women's pregnancies, including a majority of independents, 55%, and nearly three in four women, 73%. 
<laughs> this is the guy who said there has to be some form of punishment. So yeah, yeah I think it would be pretty concerning. No, no. And it's, see, this is another part of this. So you have like these things start piling up on each other. So, you know, the fact that the Republicans in the Senate blocked the bill that would guarantee the right that was also today, to yeah. contraception, uh, contraceptives. That's what I'm saying. This is what I'm saying. This all starts feeding on itself and and moving more people. I, again, not not necessarily that the the verdict, uh, not the 34 felony counts on their own, but okay. So he's got 34 felony counts. He's going to allow states to monitor women's pregnancies in order to prosecute them. Um, you know, at some point that cross pressure, and this is, we've talked about this last cycle, the cross pressure of, I'm really disappointed in the economy. I kind of blame Biden for it, or maybe I really blame Biden for it, which is crazy. But I mean, I understand why people do, because the guy at the top takes the blame. Uh, but there was a pandemic and there was supply side issues, chain issues and all these other things. And there was a Putin invading Ukraine that you know, run, ran up oil prices and gas prices. Okay. All that, but okay. But you got, you're, you're, you're upset about your woman and you're upset about, uh, where the country is going currently economically, even as inflation is coming down grudgingly, but it is. Um, so, you know, you look at that and then you got to look across the, okay, my choice, your choice is a guy who's a, you know, two or three years, whatever, younger, but he's a convicted on 34 felony accounts. A, you, you know, a, a, I mean, just a, a mess of a human being who, who wants to monitor your pregnancy in order to prosecute you right. if you violate an abortion ban. I don't know how that, cro- I, I mean, I, look, I'm a guy and I'm an old guy. Okay, I got that. But I'm not sure how I'm now trying to get in the shoes of a woman who's trying to make this decision. And I I just don't see how undecided women at this point looking once presented with that contrast decide, oh, yeah, because of the old decent guy and, uh, you know, and I'm worried about the economy, I'm going to put this dictator wannabe criminal who, by the way, wants to arrest women in a state that has no exceptions, if they have, if they're raped or something, they still have to. Ha- I mean, it's just crazy uh, that to think that no, somehow all this is additive for Trump. It's not. It's going to cost them this thing, and in, if it adds to anybody, it will be yes. There will be people who reluctantly vote for Biden, but they will do it. Some of them will stay home, but that's our. You know, right. that's the the work we have to do. We have to make sure people understand that contrast. That and that's where I, I agree with Rothkopf. Every day, all of us in the pro-democracy coalition make that contrast, call Trump out for who and what he is. Um, that's what, the, you know, that's that's the big takeaway from this week, I think. Well, that's a really good place for us to end today, Joe. Thanks, Alex. And thanks, everyone, for listening to That Trippy Show. This podcast will always be free with support from our advertisers and is part of Resolute Square. Check out the latest at ResoluteSquare.com slash trippy. Please subscribe to That Trippy Show and leave a review on Apple or wherever you listen. Please tell your friends to give us a listen. Uh, we really would like to spread the word and get others to, to build a following where we're, we're reaching more people with this message. So if you're listening to this episode on YouTube, please like and subscribe to get alerts when we post the next episode. It also helps us spread the word. You can always send us a question to that trippy show at gmail.com or leave us a question in the review on iTunes. We'll see you next week. Resolute Square.